Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video, I am doing a reaction video. So I I am doing reacting to some scary stories. Um, I've been watching some of it from Corpse Husband. You should check it out. Basically, I'm going to react to some scary stories. I hope you guys enjoy. First, a little background information. I worked the night shift at a local gas station when I was 19. I was the only employee in the store, as usual. It's getting soggy. On Christmas Eve, I had to work the overnight, 10 p.m. into 6 a.m. into Christmas Day. It was a normal night, no customers, and my cleaning was almost finished. I had just got done eating and decided to go out for a smoke when I hear someone walking towards the store in the distance. Now, this was nothing out of the ordinary until the person gets to the pumps and I can actually see them. It was a male, about 5'9 and somewhat thin. He was wearing a dark hoodie, jeans, and was carrying a gift bag. Huh. As he got closer, though, I noticed that he was bleeding from his forehead. What the heck? As he approached me, I asked if he was okay and if he needed any help. I noticed that the bag was empty, which should have been my first red flag. The guy looked me in the eyes, looking dead inside, and said, You want to help? Then don't call the fucking cops. I agreed and told him that there was a first aid kit inside and that I'd be happy to help no. him with his wound. Crazy, I know, but I was just trying to be nice to him since he was someone who could be a threat to me. We went inside the store and I got the first aid kit. As I pulled out the stuff for him to clean himself up with, he said he needed to use the restroom and once again told me not to call the cops. I told myself that if he wasn't out of the bathroom within a reasonable amount of time, I was going to call the police. He didn't come out, so I went outside and called. Call earlier. The dispatcher told me to stay out of the store and find somewhere safe to be until the officers arrived. I stood at the side of the store where he wouldn't be able to see me, but I could see if he came out of the bathroom. He never came out. The police Maybe arrived jump and out asked the where he was. I pointed and they went in. Just as they got to the door, he opened it and tried to lunge at one of the officers. What? They tackled him through a knife that he was holding and promptly arrested him. As they were walking him out of the store, he told me that I was lucky that the police got there when they did. And that he'd see me again soon. Was he gonna kill him? I was a little shook by that. One of the officers came to take my statement after the other took the guy away. I told the officer what had all happened and... Then I asked something I really wish I didn't know the answer to. What was he doing in the bathroom? The officer told me that it was a good thing that I called when I did. Because the guy had shot up some heroin in the bathroom that was going to come out with a knife, stab me, and run with what money was in the register. That's what the so guy he was, was on for. job, basically. This guy had a lot of problems and a lot of anger inside of him. The reason he was so angry was also the reason his head was bleeding. He owed his dealer money and got beat because of it. His solution to the problem was robbing the store. The officer told me if I didn't call when I did, I'd either be critically wounded or dead because he wasn't going to allow me to stand between him and that money. I hope I never see that crazy drug addict who wanted to kill me to free himself of debt again. That's true. Number two. One time I went to the bar with one of my friends. As Americans, we may feel apart, but there's so much we actually agree on. Very few dads. Sads. I had just turned 21, so I haven't been to many bars up to that point. My friend was drinking on the way to the bar, so he was already pretty drunk when we got there. When I sat at the bar, a cute girl came and talked to me and my friend. She said her name was Candace, and I noticed she had really, really bright red hair. I assumed she dyed it. I, I mean, it was pretty, but unnatural. Anyways, the girl was flirting with me and my friend. She could tell my friend was already very drunk. To be honest, I played along like I was drunk already, too, since it seemed to be working for my friend. I didn't know if she was just trying to get free drinks, so I told her we didn't have much money. Mm. She then offered to buy us drinks. 
I think she we're just going. She kept buying us drinks, and I started to get confused Robert. as to who she liked between me and my friend. Mm -hmm. My friend went to the bathroom. Before he came back, he was kicked out by the bouncers. What? He was way too drunk. <sighs> Candace and I went outside with him. She kept telling him to go home with her. He was so out of it, he could barely answer This girl, her. what's she trying to do? I told her he was too drunk and that I couldn't let him go anywhere. Exactly. I didn't want him to wake up hungover in some random house with no car and exactly. no idea what happened. Candace kept pushing it, saying that she would take good care of him, but I told her no because I had to stay That's with him. That's a creepy way to flirt. I was more sober than him and he was my responsibility. I told her the only way he was going anywhere was if I tagged along. Exactly. I assumed she thought That's it was what friends are for. cock blocking, but my friend could barely stand and lost interest in Candace already at that mm -hmm. point. She immediately started flirting with me and offered to get my friend a taxi to drive home and said we could go to her place alone. At this point, I had a few drinks and I was already well, she bugged, tried to so pull. I agreed. We took my friend to the taxi and walked to her car. I slightly stumbled on the way to her car. Wow, you're pretty drunk, huh? She said, smiling as no, she no. held onto my arm. Yeah, I said. I don't know why, but I just felt slightly shy and anxious. Everything was just happening too easy for me, so I felt uneasy. We got in her car and we drove down the street. Want to stop at the liquor store and get somewhere to drink? I'll this buy girl. it, so don't worry about paying. She offered. I didn't want to drink any more than I already did. I mean, I Why was she trying to get him and wanted to be able though, to carry you know? myself throughout the rest of the night. Sometimes I made myself look stupid when I'm drunk, so I didn't want to ruin anything with Candace more than I already did earlier with telling her my friend was too drunk. I told her I was already drunk enough, but she insisted. I didn't want to seem lame, so I told her to get me a pint of liquor with some apple juice to chase it. She went into the store and came out with a lot more than just a pint. Oh. I assumed she wanted to drink more also, and that's why she got a fifth instead of a pint. On the car ride, we passed the bottle back and forth, but she took tiny sips. I tried to take tiny sips, but she kept passing me the bottle and telling me to drink. I somehow managed to drink all of my apple juice, and I pretended I to drink the bottle to by something. spitting the liquor into the apple juice bottle. I tossed the apple juice bottle full of liquor out the window before she even saw it. That's good. I didn't want her to know that I was acting drunker than I was. I mean, she actually believed I was sloppy drunk when I was simply buzzed. I took a couple more sips of liquor and then finished the bottle. Mm -hmm. Throughout the car ride, I called her the wrong name a couple of times to get a reaction out of her. She didn't react to it. She just kept letting me call her Carla without correcting me. Who is For some reason, I thought maybe she lied to me about her name initially. We drove up to her house, and I pretended to trip and stumble into her front door, which was unlocked, and we walked into her house. She closed her front door, and then she locked it. I thought that was strange, but assumed she didn't want anyone walking in on us. I told her that I had to use the bathroom. I walked into her bathroom, locked something the door, is up. and looked in the mirror. Something is wrong. I just felt strange. I felt like something was off. I felt myself becoming more drunk from finishing the bottle earlier. I turned on the sink to Don't make noise and made myself something. puke up the liquor I drank. I flushed, went to the sink, and started drinking the tap water out of my hands to sober up. I just didn't want to be drunk, but I still wanted to hook up with Candace, so I pretended to be drunk. I turned off <laughs> the sink. You want to hook up even though something is wrong? Talking to someone. Dude. He's drunk as hell. He can barely stand up. You do it. Who was she talking to, and do what? I walked out of the bathroom and into the living room. The moment I stepped into the living room, I saw her walking into another room. What? All I could see was the back of her head, that strange, very bright red hair go into another room. I didn't see her face or anything. I just saw her kind of walk fast into the room. The living room was pretty dark. Hey, where are you going? I slurred like I was drunk. She walked back into the dark living room and up to me. Let's go in my room. She said. I looked at her bright red hair and then into her eyes. Mm -hmm. They were different. Her, Something her is whole wrong. face was different. Something is wrong. It was another girl with the same hair. What? And that's when I realized it was another girl with the same wig on. It was a wig the whole time. She changed it with the girl from earlier for whatever reason. So there's two people. My heart felt like it stopped. But I tried to look like I had no idea it was a different girl. I kind of smiled at her and told her I needed to use the bathroom one more time and told her sorry I was so drunk. She said, It's fine. Just hurry up in there. 
I went into the bathroom and locked the door. I heard her whisper something to someone again. This time, I think I heard a male voice whisper back. I honestly didn't concentrate on listening to exactly what she said, but something sketchy was going on. And something I had to get sketchy. out of that house. I opened the bathroom window and jumped straight out of it and ran faster than I ever have in my entire life. Got I run. didn't look behind myself or anything. Mm. I just ran straight back. through the backyard, jumped the fence, ran always through someone back, else's backyard, hit a road, and ran towards back. the main road. I I'm kept running down the main road until I saw a star CVS. Mm -hmm. I ran into the CVS and stood straight at the front of the store in front of the camera. Oof. I called the taxi and went home. Damn. I tried to think of what happened that night. What was she or they planning that night? Why did she tell me a fake name? Why was she trying to get my friend and I so drunk? I thought maybe a robbery, but she kept spending money on us. She kept it's buying us drinks and even paid for my friend's taxi cab. And mostly, why did she wear a wig that she gave to another girl to wear? Who was she talking to? What did it mean? And what was in that room they tried to lure me into? The next day after this incident, I went back to the house with a couple of friends to see just what was going on. Yeah. Nobody was there. No cars, no people, nothing. Just an empty house. What I ended up finding out that the house was a summer rental. Uh. And whoever those people were, they broke into the house and used it for only that night and never came back. What? Anyways, that's my story. Damn. I mean... Oh, number three. I think we might end it after this. Or maybe one and one more. It was about 3 in the morning and I was on my way to my job at my local McDonald's to open with one of my favorite managers there Man, with these me. these stories with McDonald's... Mm. Something always happened when you worked late at night. She told me to text her when I got there so that she could let me inside. Once I pulled in, I noticed a man standing outside of his car in the farthest corner of the parking lot. He was shooting me this sort of menacing stare. Let me point out that it's completely pouring outside. Mm -hmm. I was really confused as to why this guy wasn't just sitting in his car. I then parked and texted my manager to let me inside. Seconds later, I noticed her... Ah! Oh, shoot. My I bad. I was confused as to why this guy wasn't just sitting in his car. I then parked and texted my manager to let me inside. Mm -hmm. Seconds later, I noticed her at the door opening it for me. Upon walking up to her, I say my usual good morning. I was stopped mid-sentence by her rushing me inside and saying, Did you see that guy outside? Uh, I clearly. told her yes, and she proceeded to help me refill sauces, napkins, and things like that. My manager then told me that she's... So, so you're just gonna... They just talk about there's a... Some weird could we do outside and now they're doing... Okay. I checked the security tapes just to make sure that everything during the period that the restaurant was closed was okay. Uh huh. That's Minutes good. later, my manager called me into her office for whatever reason. She told me to look at the screen and it showed that the same man was standing outside. The no. time was 1247. She then fast forwarded the tape to reveal that the man had been standing outside the entire time up until now. What is he doing? And at this point, it's about 350 a.m. I ran to the front lobby the and I noticed him still standing over by his car. No way. I figured or was hoping that he was probably just on something and he was waiting for us to open so I that guess. maybe he could get breakfast. But how, why I resumed would he stand filling there sauces again time. and making sure everything Got was in working order. Until I was abruptly interrupted what? by banging at the front door. That was a weird posture right there. I resumed filling sauces again and making sure everything was in working order. Until I was abruptly interrupted by banging at the front door. <laughs> he said, I walked thumbs over up. and noticed a figure right outside the front door. What's wrong it was the man. I yelled that we were closed and that he would have to come back later. Oh, that didn't seem to face him story? as he continued I mean, to bang on the no. door. I walked away, figuring why that he was nipping? just being an asshole when suddenly I heard a loud crash. I ran to the lobby to see the he glass broke door the broken window? and the man beginning to step inside. I yelled for my manager and told her that. Why you look like a zombie? The glass door broken and the man beginning to step inside. 
I yelled for my manager and told her that we needed Man, to leave need through the a back better, door. A better, um, and we did just that. Window. We booked it to our Thicker cars ones. and both called the cops. Yes, he broke they it so easily. They arrived in about 15 What's minutes wrong? and came outside the restaurant with a dirty looking man in cuffs. What's they wrong with said he thing? was hiding in the back janitor's closet with a large knife in his hand. So that's my story. Is he okay? And also the reason I'm never working early mornings again. Just don't work. Just, I mean, like, just don't work at night. Or even... <laughs> okay. This is the last one, so. Ooh, this is different. Skinwalker. <gasps> Ooh. Ready for this one. Is different. My family and I live in Arizona and we occasionally visit our Navajo family in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. We left early to get there by noon or less. It is a very long and boring trip there. I like road we trips. get there before noon and we have time to mess Fun. around and talk with our extended family. And we, kids, start to play around till the evening starts to show. <laughs> That's some good throw there. Ooh, I want some s'mores. Huh? Oh. The house is too small for everyone to fit and sleep in. Some of the kids have to sleep in the trailer and truck camper, but two of my cousins and I had the amazing luck of sleeping in the old, slightly torn tent. Oh. Why would you sleep in a tent if there's... Um... sleep at this point and for some unknown reason I wake up mm. of course I'm still tired and rubbing my Damn. eyes while yawning meaning I wasn't well aware of my surroundings once I finish rubbing my eyes I look straight at the entrance of the tent and see a figure illuminated by the back porch hey. light standing in front of the tent at first I was scared but thought it was my other cousins just messing with us mm. As this person was still standing outside our tent looking at us, I turned to one of my older cousins who was two yeah. years older than me to wake him up and tell him that someone was standing outside of our tent. He tries to brush me off, but I persist and he turns to me and asks me what I wanted. I tell him to look at the entrance of the tent, and he does. I've never seen someone go from the brink of sleep to sheer panic and alertness in their eyes that fast before. Oh, God. He looks at me with this panicked <gasps> face and tells me to be quiet. He whispers to me that it's a skinwalker and that we need to be a quiet again. Walker. We lay there for the longest time, and from my memory, it was at least an hour or more. Yeah. We were just about to go back to sleep because it hadn't done anything. Mm. Then it started to move around the tent. Okay, now I'm scared to go camping. <laughs> what Remember when I said this was an old tent? Remember when I said this was an old tent? Yeah, it had some holes in it. Imagine if I were there. <laughs> One of the holes I mean, was the out. size of a quarter and I decided to be brave. As it continues to walk around the tent a fourth time, I slowly crawl towards the hole and try Why? to take a look. Why? As I did this, my cousin told me to get back to the bed or it'll hurt us. Of course, as a kid, I ignore the warning. This dude. I'm at the this quarter boy. size hole and looking out to see whatever it is. Yeah, that's was. how you always die first. Every it horror movie. around the hole and what I saw was bone chilling. The dog. Oh, it's a wolf. I can hide under my sleeping bag while my cousin does the same. This thing decided to stop moving and start looking at us again. 
I hid under the covers and spent every ounce of energy being scared. That's what's under my bed. And then I finally fell asleep. Oh, thank goodness. I would have been cautious, unconscious, already. Yeah. I woke up early, maybe around five, and I decided to look around the tent to see well, if there like was he anything went there. Some shit. I see footprints, bare footprints that send shivers throughout my body. I saw the footprints move around the tent. This hit me hard because I was now realizing it wasn't a dream. As I further investigate the footprints, I noticed that it went off track. Why it would went you off go? to the rocky hills nearby where we were staying at. I followed the track to the hills, about a football field Why? away from the house. As I continue to follow the tracks, something strange and scary happens. It goes from two footprints walking for a while to footprints and handprints in the dirt starting to form. I found that kind of strange because no person would do that out here. As I followed the tracks further into the hills, the hands and feet started to get smaller and smaller. It then subtly changed into coyote paw prints. That is when I stopped and turned back home, first walking fast, then onto a full-on run. When I got back, I sat down on the back porch for a while and thought about telling my family, but I didn't think that they would believe me. In the end, I didn't tell anyone, even the cousin I woke up in the middle of the night. Well, that's my story. I urge you guys to not go into the Navajo reservation to go looking for them. You will bite off more than you can chew. We, my people, take these beings very seriously and do our best to not yeah. talk about them. Even though I broke this code, I just thought to warn you guys about them. Whoever is listening are the first people to hear this story. I had a few more stories to tell, but this is by far the scariest one I had. Okay, guys, that will be all for today. I hope you guys enjoy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!